Hello everyone, this is Live Life Well TV host Robert Landau with another episode of America's Greatest Personalities. This episode, we are going to cover Mr. Humphrey Bogart. Stay tuned. So let's say that you happen to be a big wig Hollywood producer and you are about to cast a major motion picture that you just know is going to be a giant successful blockbuster. You've got the female lead already cast, but the male lead who really carries the picture is still up for grabs. Every agent in Hollywood is calling you nonstop in the hopes that you will cast their client. But in your mind, you've actually narrowed it down to two. And it's a difficult choice for you to make. One actor has a reputation for being late on the set, has a bit of a drinking problem, can be snooty with others, and happens to be an alleged confirmed womanizer. The other actor is committed to the art of acting, is never late, always knows his lines, and has a deep respect for just about all other actors in the entire industry. Which actor would you hire to carry your film to profitability? If you wanted the more professional of the two, then you would be describing the one and only Mr. Humphrey Bogart. Ha! I bet you thought it was the first one and not the second. The famous actor David Niven once said these words. Bogart was quite alarming to me for the first time with his sardonic humor and his snarl that passed for a smile. It took me a little while to realize that he had perfected an elaborate camouflage to cover up one of the kindest and most generous of hearts. Producer, director John Huston of Bogart once said these words. Himself, he never took too seriously his work most seriously. He regarded the somewhat gaudy figure of Bogart, the star, with amused cynicism. Bogart, the actor, he held in deep respect. And Lauren Bacall has once said this, he is the only man I have ever known who truly and completely belonged to himself. His convictions about life work and people were so strong that they were absolutely unshakable. Nothing, no one could make him lower his standards, lessen his character. He had the greatest gifts a man could ever have. Respect for himself, for his craft, integrity about life as well as work. And finally, Spencer Tracy said, after me, He's the best. <laughs> Humphrey DeForest Bogart was born on December 25th, 1899. His father was a doctor and his mother was a portrait artist. Humphrey was an only child. He had two sisters. The Bogarts were actually quite well off. They lived in a suburb of New York City and also had a summer house in upstate New York. After a term at the Andover Academy in Massachusetts, Humphrey decided to enlist in the Navy. What was different or pronounced about Bogart's appearances? What do you think? It was during this time that Bogart wound up with that famous scar on his upper lip that caused him to have a very slight lisp. Does anyone know how he got that scar? There are numerous rumors, there are numerous stories. Some say it was the result of shrapnel Others say it had something to do with his father. And here is, according to some research, what allegedly happened. This is what most of the people had to say 
to answer this question. One day, Bogart was asked to escort a Navy prisoner. The prisoner asked Bogart for a cigarette. He got him a cigarette and was in the process of reaching for a match when the prisoner suddenly hit Bogart over the mouth with his handcuffs, broke free, and then tried to escape. Bogart caught up with him and would only get treatment for his torn lip once the prisoner was once again imprisoned. Bogart's acting career began in a strange kind of roundabout sort of way. In 1920, he was hired to be the manager of a touring play by the name of The Ruined Lady. This position paid him $50 a week. He hated this job and others in the touring company actually agreed with him. It was decided that he would do something different. Bogart would have one line and only one line to say in this play. As he saw his son in the play as a waiter, Bogart would have to say to the person next to him, the boy's good, isn't he? That was it. That was the one and only line Bogart was given in this play. Was he good at saying that one and only line? All accounts actually a point, uh, will point to no, but nevertheless, this is exactly when Bogart decided that he wanted to be an actor. Just by saying, the boy's good, isn't he? Bogart would remain in the theater for the next number of years and would marry twice. On May 20th, 1926, he married a gal by the name of Helen Mekin, a famous stage actress who was 10 years his senior. Strangely enough, he wasn't crazy about her and was heard to say the following close to their wedding day, God, I don't want to marry that girl. Yikes. <laughs> the marriage ended less than a year later. Bogart's second wife was also a stage actress. Her name was Mary Phillips. They met in 1923 and acted together in numerous theater productions. They married in 1928. Bogart didn't only perform on the stage, he would occasionally appear in films, but actually would pretty much go unnoticed in them. What he really needed now was a major break, and little did he know that that was just around the corner. In 1934, a producer contacted Bogie and wanted him to take the part of Duke Manti in a stage play called The Petrified Forest. Duke Manti was an escape killer that ends up holding a number of people hostage at a gas station. This was the first time that Bogart would play a gangster type, a person from the wrong side of the track, so to speak. This role may not have been typecasting, but something somewhere clicked. The public all of a sudden sat up and took notice. Directors and producers all of a sudden sat up and took notice too. All of a sudden, Bogart realized that he was now well on his way to becoming a bona fide star. But how was Bogart to become a Hollywood star if he was appearing in this wildly popular play? Warner Brothers studio execs actually one night saw the play and snapped up the rights to the play. After some initial wrangling, Bogart signed to play the role of Duke Manti and the rest is the stuff of Hollywood legends. Bogart packed up his things and he now had to move from the East Coast to the West Coast since he was now proudly under contract to the one and only Warner Brothers studio. But what about his wife, Mary? Mary decided she would go with Humphrey to Hollywood, but did at last, unfortunately not. Mary had a successful stage career back on the East Coast, and it was decided that she was happier there than in Hollywood. So the marriage was over. 
but Bogart would not stay single for long. He would soon meet a young up and coming actress named Mayo Methot. She had a loud voice and a personality to go along with it, and he fell head over heels for her. They married in 1938, but would this one last? Mayo was known as hitting the bottle, unfortunately, a little too often. The couple would argue. Arguments would turn into loud, rather intense fights. They were known as the battling Bogarts. In the first two years of his contract with Warner Brothers, Bogart would make no less than 12 films. In eight of those, he would always find himself playing the same part, the gangster. As you can well imagine, he was getting kind of tired of this and longed to show that he could also play other types. Well, ask and you shall receive. In 1940, he starred in director John Huston's The Maltese Falcon. He played Sam Spade, a private eye, and once again, everybody took notice. Now Bogart proved he could play a variety of parts and one of his greatest roles was just before him. Some people feel that this was one of the best pictures ever made. The movie was released on January 23, 1943 and starred Ingrid Bergman and the film was Casablanca. The picture was a smash, an unqualified hit. Many people don't realize that the script was only half finished when the cameras began to roll. Everyone was given new lines to learn each and every day, and the actors never knew how the film would end until they filmed the ending. The film would go on to win Academy Awards for Best Picture, Best Screenplay, and Best Director. Bogart was nominated for Best Actor, but unfortunately didn't win. Bogart was quoted as saying, the best way to survive an Oscar is never to try to win another one. You've seen what happens to some Oscar winners, he went on to say. They spend the rest of their lives turning down scripts while searching for the great role to try and win another one. Hell, I hope I'm never even nominated again. It's meat and potato rolls for me from now on. Mayo, Bogart's wife, would often visit the set of Casablanca, and she soon became incensed when she saw her man filming intense, prolonged love scenes with the ravishingly beautiful Ingrid Bergman. Mayo's jealousy only worsened when Bogart started filming To Have and To Have Not with what co-star? The one and only Lauren Bacall. Suffice it to say that Bogart divorced Mayo on May 10th, 1945, and Bogart and Bacall were married 11 days later. What do you think Bogart's wedding present was from Warner Brothers? It was something you couldn't find on any register anywhere. He was gifted with a new contract that guaranteed him an annual salary of no less than $1 million for the next 15 years. Bogie and Bacall would make The Big Sleep in 1946, Dark Passage in 1947, and Key Largo in 1948. He would make another memorable film, this time one by the name of The Treasure of the Sierra Madre. 1949 was the year a son was born to the Bogarts. His name was Stephen Humphrey. In 1952, a daughter, Leslie Howard, would be welcomed into the family. Bogart would go on to be the first actor to form his own production company. In 52, he would star in John Huston's more than memorable The African Queen. He played against character as an unkept comic type of guy who was a perfect foil for Katharine Hepburn's character. 
Now, remember that Oscar quote of Bogies that I just shared with you just a few minutes ago? This is when he said it because finally at long last, he received an Academy Award for his fine performance in The African Queen. It might mean even more to you if you knew that that year Bogart beat out Marlon Brando for A Streetcar Named Desire and Frederick March for Death of a Salesman. A number of successful films would follow all the way to his final motion picture. This was in 1956. The picture was The Harder They Fall. Just after the film was released, Bogart went into the hospital to remove a cancerous growth from his esophagus. He would recover only to be admitted once again due to nerve pressure caused by the growth of scar tissue on his throat. He went home after the operation, but would never really recover. We would lose this great guy, wonderful actor, the incomparable Humphrey Bogart on January 14th, 1957. John Huston said, he is quite irreplaceable. There will never be anyone like him. How true those words were and still are of Mr. Houston's. Can you replace a true Hollywood legend who made a sizable dent in our crazy, fast-paced culture? Think of how Bogey still is a part of our lives. How many comedians have imitated him? How many actors still speak like him when they have to play a gangster? How about that furniture line that is often quoted in, in furniture commercials? Um, <sighs> The way he dressed, right? Trench coat and hat, and they all knew exactly who he was. It was all a tribute to him. And how about these memorable, immortal words? You must remember this. A kiss is just a kiss. A sigh is just a sigh. The fundamental things uh, as time goes by. Moonlight and love songs never out of date. Hearts full of passion, jealousy and hate. Woman needs man and man must have his mate. That no one can deny. It's still the same old story, a fight for love and glory, a case of do or die. The world will always welcome lovers as time goes by. Here's looking at you, kid. Humphrey Bogart was and will always be a true Hollywood legend, a strong but soft, edgy but sensitive personality with a heart as big as the world he loved to be called a part of. I'm sure nobody missed him more than the great Lauren Bacall, uh, but uh, maybe we are a close second. With that said and done, I'd like to thank you for tuning in to this episode of America's Greatest Personalities featuring the amazing Humphrey Bogart. Thanks so much. We'll see you on another episode. This has been Robert Landau, Live Life Well TV host.